We know the truth. We don't need to hear someone tell us the truth. What we need to hear more and more of at the present time in the church is for laity to say, no, that's not true. That's not true. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. We might be seeing a small resurgence in the church in the United States when it comes to Catholic schools. There are, of course, many questions that will require time to be answered, but at this moment, there seems to be an admission on the part of some bishops that Catholic education needs to be shored up. A place to start that effort would quite naturally be with the educators themselves, the teachers. Since the demise of the religious teaching orders in the United States about 40 years ago, huge numbers of lay people have had to be hired to replace the sisters and brothers who used to teach in the classrooms. That has caused problems, the most obvious one being that the cost of a Catholic education has shot through the roof. It costs a lot more money to pay a lay staff than it does to keep a convent of nuns or a monastery of brothers around. This has placed Catholic education largely out of financial reach for huge numbers of Catholic families. But the other and much more important cost has been the loss of the transmission of the faith. Many Catholics, huge numbers of Catholics, even ones with good intentions are, at this point, after decades of horrible catechesis, simply unprepared to teach the faith in anything beyond a very superficial level. Not only are many of them lacking in knowledge, that lack of knowledge often spills over into their private lives and results in many of them not living the faith. So we have a Catholic teacher population comprised of vast numbers of instructors who do not know or live the faith in a truly substantive way. That spells D-I-S-A-S-T-E-R disaster. To try and remedy this, various bishops around the country are taking a much more careful look at their teachers' contracts as they come up for renewal, which is generally every three years diocese by diocese. In many instances, prior contracts contained very loose or ambiguous language about teachers needing to live the faith. The point may seem obvious, but it has certainly gotten sort, short shrift. It's not reasonable to expect someone to be able to be a good teacher of the faith if they aren't actually living the faith. You might say, well, of course not, no duh, but this is the prevailing situation in many Catholic schools. In the case of Bishop Kevin Rhodes in the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend, Indiana, he has just taken great steps to tighten his language in his teacher's contract so every teacher and others understand that they may not live a life contrary to the Catholic faith and still expect to be allowed to be teachers. Bravo for Bishop Rhodes. Talk about swimming against the stream. The same central issue was addressed last year by Archbishop Cordelioni in San Francisco when his Catholic teachers at four archdiocesan high schools wigged out about being required to actually believe and live the faith that they were supposedly teaching. A massive witch hunt type PR machine went into high gear trying to discredit His Excellency, even taking out a full page ad in the San Francisco paper asking Pope Francis to oust the Archbishop. We're not kidding, can't make these things up. It was paid for by the usual suspects of deep-pocketed liberal Democrats who are opposed to church's moral teaching in almost every area. The role of Catholic education is not just to inform, but to form, to form students into holy, well-educated, thinking future men and women who can be instrumental in helping society stay centered on authentic values and in the process merit heaven. That has clearly not been the result of the last half century of Catholic education by and large. Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen warned back in the 1970s that sending your child to a Catholic school was an almost guaranteed way for them to lose the faith. The problem has gotten so big that many Catholic parents around the world simply refuse to send their kids to these schools and either homeschool or support other Catholic education initiatives that are more inclined to safeguarding the faith of their children, obviously thereby their souls. There are little glimmers here and there of a possible turnaround, but as of now, they're still small, largely fledgling, and sort of unconnected. And this is true up and down the entire Catholic educational spectrum, from grade school to middle school to high school to universities. And it doesn't stop with just formal classroom education. The central problem remains in other spheres of education, like RCIA and CCD and adult education and so on. Too many people teaching who do not know and or live the faith. That's why efforts like what Bishop Rhodes and Archbishop Cordelioni are doing must be supported and cheered on and prayed for 
to be safeguarded. Haggling over the language in a given diocesan teacher's contract isn't going to accomplish everything, not by a mile, but it is a beginning, a toehold in the battle to try and reclaim Catholic education, and frankly, it's the duty and responsibility of bishops who are the supreme teachers in their diocese. They will have to give an account before the throne of our blessed Lord what they did to safeguard these souls. Pray for the bishops. Pray that others who will also find their footing and take a clear stand for the truth in the face of massive criticism and bad PR. What matters is the truth and that it be clearly communicated. Be not afraid. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.